Okay, so we're just going to torque these three down to 30 foot-pounds to get started. Started with the 38 shim and we'll see where we're at after that. We're going to leave this one at about six to eight thousand backlash. And I'm sure anybody watching knows how to adjust backlash with your spanners. If you don't, well, uh, you'll learn, I guess. Just tighten them in there until you get the correct amount of side bearing preload. We'll read that later off the pinion. And then I always like to loosen the caps just a little extra. Give her a couple taps. Always tighten down your right hand side first. If you tighten the left hand side and you don't have sufficient backlash, what you'll do is you'll end up locking it up and you'll have, to, you have a good possibility of actually bending the ring your flange of the spool. Again, this is just all trial, so you don't, you don't want to sit here and tighten your bolts down 140 and then loosen them 140 over and over. This is not the, the only time this is going to get tightened down. Your marking compound, and you're going to mark. I usually just do four teeth, both sides, nice and thick. Normally, you should check your backlash before you run a pattern, but I'm going to go ahead and do a pattern right now, and we'll check the backlash in a second. You don't really need. Some people say you got to wrap a rag around the pinion. You don't need to because you have preload in the pinion bearing area. And what I do is I run it through there three or four times and then I'm going to go all the way around. Mm, right off, but not too bad to start with. If you listen carefully, you can hear a click, click, click. Not on the coast. Okay. It's going to mean we're in too far. Okay, anyhow, here's where our pattern's at. We have a cross pattern. Toe on the drive side all the way down. Coast is not down to toe and it almost makes like a little arrow chain. Go that way. Uh, let's check the backlash. Okay, well we're sitting at about 11, 11, 12. So we've got too much backlash, but when we tighten the backlash down, if we don't alter the pinion shim at this time, it's gonna make this pattern even worse. So you can even hear it when I turn it. That click click number. That tells you it's not right. So we're going to add about four thousandths to the pinion shim. Easiest way to do this is to, you, know, you don't need to move this side at all, but you need to move this side to get your dang uh, pinion back out. So what I do is I just take a felt tip marker and mark that where it's at so I can loosen that spanner nut pop the pinion out, change the pinion shim, put it back in and adjust it right back there and the backlash should stay fairly well the same. Okay, so you got three turns. Just walk her out. Taking an 18 out and replacing it with a 23. So that gives us a total of 43 on this. There we go. Had to turn the pinion. So I'll go past the ring. This is what's nice about 9 inches. You can change the pinion shim real fast. Real easy. Okay, so what we've done now is we've changed our pinion shim for the depth and we've got it readjusted back here and, and of course the caps are torqued down and we've got 30 on the front retainer. So let's see how we do on a pattern here. 
And then we'll double check our backlash. Actually, I checked that and adjusted that a little bit while you were gone. Okay, you have no clunk clunk or click click or whatever you want to call it. It's nice and smooth. Pattern looks a lot better now. Go straight down to that tooth and you'll see that the main contact, uh, the darkest area of contact is basically a cross mounter, drive and coast. That's what you want to do is adjust your pinion depth. Your backlash can't be far out of whack or it's going to affect the pattern. So basically your backlash has to be correct Adjust your pinion depth shims till you get your main contact bodies exactly across from one another, drive and coast. Okay, so we've got a nice pattern now, so what we're going to need to do is double check our backlash. And what I've done here on this side is, you remember I told you to line the dots up? Well, initially we had too much backlash. So what I did was I actually backed that one off one hole, and I pushed this one past one hole. So we're going to get rid of that old mark and put a fresh mark so we know we go back to the same spot now because the backlash hopefully will be on the dot and we'll find that out in just a moment. That way if everything's set we can come right back to that same spot. Yes. All right well anyhow we're sitting at uh, oh right at six and seven. You want to check in a couple different spots three four whatever. And there is eight. So basically we're sitting at seven and eight. Again, you have toe-to-toe -to -toe contact directly across from one another. This is what I call the ghost pattern. There is no marking compound put on here. It's simply been rubbed onto the pinion and then wiped off onto the ring gear. You'll see you have a nice full gear tooth contact both drive and coast. Other gears are a little harder to read. Um, and what you can do is you can cheat and uh, let me put a little oil on here Okay, so anyhow now we've got the uh, correct backlash We've got the correct bearing preloads and we have the correct pattern. So now it's a piece of cake uh, You've got your spanner marked with your cap over here. So basically all we have to do is loosen the caps back that spinner out so we can get the uh, pinion back out of her. And then we are going to install the third member studs and O-ring of course on the front retainer and torque everything down and you are ready to run. What I've done here is I've also marked the pinion retainer so that it's going to be a lot easier for me to align going back up with the 10 studs. And what we're going to do when we get ready to put it back together is we'll put these shims on first. Get these studs out of there. Clean your threads again. Acetone. Don't get it in your eye. Feels real good. A couple times. Each hole. Now I only acetone one end of the stud, which is the coarse threads that are going to go into the case. The fine threads are what the nuts are going to go to, and I really don't lock tight those in place. You can if you'd like. If you're going to do that, then acetone those also. One drop inside the hole, one drop on the threads. Don't get messy, just a drop. Alright, so we've got our studs installed and loctited in place. We're going to put our shims on first. When you're adjusting a 9 inch Ford, if you were to, if your toe was too deep on the drive and you had a heel contact pattern on the coast, what you're going to do is you're going to add pinion shim which will pull the pinion out and that's going to have the drive side toe start walking outwards and at the same time the coast will go down to the toe and that's basically what you're doing to adjust your pinion depth uh, for your pattern.